let's first start talking about your referral system. You're generating about 50% or about half of your business from referral. How did you develop a database? When I first got in the business, I was introduced to Top Producer right away, which was a blessing. Um, and I've used that system ever since. I have never explored the other systems out there. I'm sure all of them are good um, and all of them have their own niches. But uh, for what we do, it works great. And um, I, I don't think the point is to use Top Producer. The point is to use some type of system. And uh, basically what we do is just any person we've ever met goes into our Top Producer system and uh, we do mailings to them uh, throughout the year. Uh, some of the mailings that we've, it's, it's evolved over the years. Right now we're doing six, seven months out of the year, our sphere of influence, past clients and contacts in, in top producer get some type of mailing from us. And we do several different things. This will be our fourth year doing this is we have a client appreciation party, which has been a real big hit and every year has grown. And what we do is uh, in our downtown area, there's an old palace theater and we rent that out for the night and it's going to be, it's close. It's like the first week in December is when we do it. And it's a very, it's a very kid focused uh, event. And, and so what we do is we rent out the movie theater. We uh, show a movie, a Christmas kids movie, um, so the, this past year we did Santa Claus, we've done uh, the Polar Express, and, and so we invite our sphere of influence. We send out a lot of postcards several months in advance to promote that. We also then dovetail that with promotion or sponsorships from our vendors that we use to help offset some of that cost. So we have title companies, mortgage companies, inspectors that not only help with the sponsorship but also do some giveaways. So at the beginning of the, the client appreciation party, you know, my team and I get up there and thank everyone for coming out. We um, also do the raffles at that point. So we usually are giving away like a Nintendo Wii, gift cards, some uh, Cleveland Cavaliers tickets, uh, which used to be more popular, and just things along that line that are just an incentive for people to come. It's a nice giveaway. And it's a nice touch for them that we're doing this event for the kids and, and so forth. So last year we had about 400 people there. And um, every year it's grown. And we plan to do it, you know, as far as we can see. So that's one way, one way we get in front of them. Then also in July we do um, a July 4th pie giveaway. Again, we do a, a mailing out to everyone in our sphere of influence in our top producer database. And... Um, we order local pies, uh, a pie from a local grocery store, and they deliver it to us. And what it basically is is our clients have to call an RSVP to us to be able to pick up and tell us if they want an apple pie or a cherry pie. And then that Friday before July 4th weekend, we book out, the whole team books out to just be at the, um, the office all day. And people just stop by, and it's a great way for us to get in front of our past clients, have a five-minute conversation with them, and, and just touch base with them. And, and that always leads to just one good interaction and then two, just us being on the top of mind with them. How many pies do you typically give away? This year, we ended up ordering about 80 to 90 pies. So it's, it's really not a whole lot of cost for us uh, because we're able to buy the, the pies in bulk. And um, the invitation goes out to several thousand people, so it's a it's a good gesture to a lot of people without a lot of cost. So it works out really great. And on that client appreciation party, is it a movie, or you or is some other function going on in that building? It's a movie. So uh, you know, the first year we did the movie The Polar Express, and then we did uh, The Grinch Who Stole Christmas, and then several other movies. Um, so it's a movie every year, and that's what we advertise. And, and so it's maybe a, a two-hour event total. And then actually what we do at the end as well is um, I have a past client that makes a very good Santa Claus. Uh, so we invite him, and he dresses up as Santa Claus, and all the kids are able to come up on stage and get their picture, and then we give them a little giveaway like a candy cane or something like that. And, and so the kids really get a kick out of that with being able to see Santa Claus and get their picture taken without having to go to the mall and wait for an hour for that, for that process. 
the intro, how long are you up there talking to the folks? Less than 10 minutes. I mean, it's just, uh, hey, thank you for coming out. Really appreciate your support throughout the year. We had a really good year. We also want to thank our sponsors, that type of thing. It's not a sales thing. We're just getting up there, getting in touch with them again, thanking them for coming out and, and letting them enjoy the night. Do the sponsors speak at all? They are usually on hand to help with the giveaways and, and the passing out and the coordinating of stuff, but they're kind of in the background. I do announce them and, and thank them, but they're kind of in the background. And are there any handouts? Do you hand out flyers to everybody when they come in? We do not. We, we actually just pass out raffle tickets so people could win the prizes that we have available for that year. Um, and then we've also somewhat catered the event. We usually just make a lot of cookies and, and have hot chocolate there, and so the kids get loaded up on sugar. And uh, that, that's really it. We, I mean, it's pretty simple with that respect, but it's, it's powerful, and kids love it, and, and the parents love it, and it's something to do around Christmas time. Do you put up banners? Not a banner, but uh, the Palace Theater, which we rent out, changes the marquee uh, in the front of the building, that, and it says, welcome, Jose Medina and Associates, clients, and, and uh, so, it, it, you know, throughout the town, people see that as well as they're driving by there. What do you think your total cost or investment is in that project? With all of the mailings going out, with the cost to rent it, I would say total cost would be... $4,500, I would say. But after all the sponsorships come in, probably half of that is offset with sponsorship costs. So really for, say, $2,000, I'm able to get in front of all my clients, have a night with them, which, as we know, one referral more than takes care of that. How you're contacting your database. You said you have the mallets. What are you sending them six times a year? It varies. For the pie giveaway, we send out two mailings. For the Christmas party, client party, we, th that ends up taking two mailings. So we're really just coming up with two different mailings. We could we usually do something that goes along with branding, uh, something to the effect of we sell a house every 57 hours or uh, something that just promotes us as far as in the market. And it's usually just um, an oversized postcard. One of the sides is the same every time, and it just has our brand on it with the Remax sign, very generic, and then we change the back message the other time. So it could be something along that or top 10 reasons to hire me as your realtor, and it says, you know, 123 Main Street sold in eight days for 97% of list price. That's number one. You know, so and so sold for ninety seven percent of list price in thirty two days, and we have ten of those we've we've done mailings like that before, so it just varies, and it, it may be just something along the lines of change your smoke detector it's that time of the year to, to check your batteries on the smoke detector, so it just varies we, we try to mix it up a little bit. What else do you do to contact? this database is it all mail, or do you also make phone calls or knock on doors or send email? A large part of it is the mailings, but I do prospecting daily to try to, to keep in touch with my current clients and past clients. So I have blocked out an hour every day to call my past clients and just catch up with them, maybe even leave them a 30-second message as far as, um, hey, I was just in your neighborhood, um, saw your house, it looked great. You know, really enjoyed working with you guys. If you guys ever think of anybody that needs to buy or sell real estate, just keep me in mind. Uh, those type of messages are, are very frequent. We don't have it set up where it's an automatic type system of, hey, I'm calling them every year or, or on their anniversary of their house. We're not that organized, but I do keep a list of my past clients and just kind of go through there and just give them a call and try in that hour of phone calls every day just to try to get through as many as possible. And I think that's, that's really important. And, and for a new agent starting out, the phone is free. I mean, just get on there and start calling. If you don't have past clients, start calling your sphere of influence and just touch base with them. Um, that's, you know, we do a lot of marketing, but that's the simplest, the least expensive, and probably the most profitable um, way to increase your business. 
It's just getting on the phone every day. It's the hard thing. I mean, it's the thing that no agent really wants to do. They don't want to pick up the phone call. They don't want to make that phone call. And that's, you know, that's not what I want to do. But I know that those are the things that are going to really make us successful. You mentioned that it's hard to pick up that phone and make the call. I assume most people are concerned about what to say. Do you have a script that you use? Not necessarily a script, but um, I don't know if you've heard of the Ford technique. Um, it's uh, basically when talking to people, Ford stands for family, occupation, recreation, and dreams. So if you pick any one of those topics or kind of go through those topics with any person, you can pretty much keep a conversation going. So it would be like, you know, hey, Mike, how is, how is the family? How's the wife? Um, so that would be talking about family. Um, how's the job going? I heard that they had uh, some layoffs at the factory. Um, and then recreation is, you know, do you guys have any fun plans for this summer? Do you guys go on vacation? Uh, and then dreams would be, you know, I know you talked about maybe one day having an investment property. Have you guys thought about that? Or how is the retirement coming? Are you guys close to that? So the family, occupation, recreation, dreams, if you have that in front of you, and you just pick up the phone and start talking to someone, that kind of just leads you into a natural conversation. That you're not just calling them to, to solicit their business. You're calling them to, to touch base with them and see how they're doing. 